In this video, we will talk about variations of sine and cosine functions y equals a sine of bx minus c and y equals a cosine of bx minus c. To the left, we have the graphs of basic sine and cosine functions and they both have the same amplitude and the same period. The amplitude is 1 and the period is 2 pi. The amplitude shows the maximum value of the function and the period tells us that on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, the function completes one full cycle. The sine function passes through the origin and the cosine function passes to the point 0, 1. Now, in the forms that we will discuss in this video, there is a number a in front of the function, a number b in front of x, and a number c that is subtracted from bx. Number a causes the function to stretch or to shrink vertically, and we use it to find the amplitude. The formula for finding the amplitude is the absolute value of a. So the amplitude is always represented by a positive number and it shows the maximum value of the function. Now number b causes the graph to stretch or to shrink horizontally. So let's take a look at the following two cases. When b is greater than 1, then the graph is shrunk horizontally by a factor of 1 over b. So this means that if the basic sine function has the period of 2 pi, then when b is greater than 1, the period of the function will be less than 2 pi. And in the second case, if b is between 0 and 1, then the graph is stretched horizontally by a factor of 1 over b. And this means that if the basic function has the period of 2 pi, then when b is between 0 and 1, the period will be greater than 2 pi. To find the period of both these functions, we take 2 pi and we multiply it by 1 over b, which is the same as 2 pi divided by b. So then to the right we will write the formula for the period and the period equals 2 pi divided by b. Now let's talk about this number c. Because of this number the whole graph will be shifted to the right or to the left. If this function completes one full cycle as x changes from 0 to 2 pi, then this function completes one full cycle when bx minus c changes from 0 to 2 pi. To find the values of x for which the function completes one full cycle, we have to solve the following inequality. We will write bx minus c greater or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. To solve this inequality for x, first we will add c to all three parts. In the middle, negative c and positive c will cancel, and to the left, 0 plus c is c. In the middle now we have bx, and to the right we have 2 pi plus c. Now we need to divide all three parts by b. Then on the left we will have c over b. In the middle b and b will cancel and we will have x. And to the right we will write 2 pi over b plus c over b. So the function completes one full cycle when x changes from c over b to 2 pi over b plus c over b. This means that c over b represents the x coordinate where the cycle will start and 2 pi over b plus c over b represents the x coordinate where the cycle will end. Then the expression c over b is called the phase shift and let's add it to the right. So the phase shift equals c over b. And now to clarify this one more time, with the basic sine or cosine functions, the cycle starts at 0 and ends at 2 pi. This 2 pi also represents the period. But with these forms, the cycle starts at c over b, 
the period is 2 pi over b and the cycle ends at 2 pi over b plus c over b. And now for the phase shift we have two cases. If c over b is positive then the graph is shifted to the right but if c over b is negative then the graph is shifted to the left. Now with these three formulas in place let's see an example. We will graph the function y equals 3 sine of 2x plus pi over 2. This function has the form y equals a sine of bx minus c but in this form we have a minus in front of c while in this function we have a plus in front of pi over 2. Therefore to match this form we can rewrite this function as y equals 3 sine of 2x minus negative pi over 2. As you see these two negatives make a positive. And now in the next step we will identify a, b and c. a is 3, b is 2 and c is negative pi over 2. From here to be able to graph the function we need to find the amplitude, the period and the phase shift. The amplitude is found by taking the absolute value of a and in this case the absolute value of 3 is 3. The period of the function is found by dividing 2 pi by b and in this case b is 2 and 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. And the phase shift is found by the formula c over b and in this case c is negative pi over 2 and b is 2. We can rewrite this as negative pi over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 which makes negative pi over 4. So this is where the cycle will begin. Recall that when c over b is negative the graph is shifted to the left. Now I will start the rectangular coordinate system and we will discuss what we have so far. Because the amplitude is 3 the graph will go up 3 units and down 3 units. The phase shift is negative pi over 4 and this is a point to the left of the origin. From this point we will have a cycle over the period of pi. So again to clarify this one more time if the cycle of the basic sine function starts at 0 the cycle of our function will start at negative pi over 4. Next do you see how to graph the basic sine function I used 5 points. Let's do the same for the function we need to graph. For this we need to take the period and divide it into 4 intervals. So if we take the period and we divide it by 4 then we will get pi over 4. So in our function a quarter period is pi over 4. Now to find the x coordinates of the 5 points we need to start with the phase shift and we need to keep adding quarter periods. So the first x coordinate will be negative pi over 4. As you see we just brought down the phase shift. Now to find the next x coordinate we take the one from above and we add a quarter period. Then negative pi over 4 plus positive pi over 4 equals 0. To find the next x coordinate take the one from above and add a quarter period. Then 0 plus pi over 4 is pi over 4. The next x coordinate is the one from above pi over 4 
plus another quarter period, which is also pi over 4, and pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2. And the last x coordinate is pi over 2 plus pi over 4, and pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi over 4, and if we add pi over 4, we will get 3 pi over 4. So on the x-axis, we will have negative pi over 4, then 0, then positive pi over 4, then pi over 2, then 3 pi over 4. Now we need to find the y-coordinates for these values of x. I will rewrite the function y equals 3 sine of 2x plus pi over 2. Then I will start a table for the values of x and y. Then in this table, let's bring all these x coordinates, that is negative pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 4. Then to find the y coordinates, we will take each of these values and we will replace them in the function. When x is negative pi over 4, y is 3 sine of 2 times negative pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Here, 2 times negative pi over 4 is negative pi over 2, and negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 0, and sine of 0 is 0. Then 3 times 0 equals 0. So the first y coordinate in the table will be 0. And this is what was expected because in the basic sine function, the first point of the cycle is on the x axis. Now, because the number in front of sine is positive, we expect the graph to go up. So, from this point, the graph needs to go up first. So, let's replace 0 in the function and see if this is true. So, when x is 0, y equals 3 sine of 2 times 0 plus pi over 2. Then, sine of pi over 2 is 1 and 3 times 1 is 3. So indeed when x is 0, y is 3. Then the next y coordinate we expect it to be 0. Let's replace y equals 3 sine of 2 times pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Then here 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2 and pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 is pi, and sine of pi is 0. Then 3 times 0 is 0. So when x is pi over 4, y is 0. Now from this point, we expect the graph to go down to negative 3. So when x is pi over 2, y equals 3 sine of 2 times pi over 2 plus pi over 2. 2 times pi over 2 is pi and pi plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. Then we know that sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 and then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So when x is pi over 2, y is negative 3. And at last, when x is 3 pi over 4, y equals 3 sine of 2 times 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 2. Then here, 2 times 3 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, or just 2 pi. Then sine of 2 pi is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. So the last y value 
is zero. Now what is left is to plot all these points and connect them to get the graph. The first point is negative pi over 4, 0. Then the next one is 0, positive 3. Then pi over 4, 0. Then pi over 2, negative 3. And then 3 pi over 4, 0. And now let's connect them. So here we have the graph of the function y equals 3 sine of 2x plus pi over 2. I hope you learned a lot. Please leave a comment and thank you for watching.